are now here at the museum where the section of Rock Wall is located in Rockwell, Texas. And they have this beautiful gazebo I'm setting in, which is so nice. And it's right here by this little artificial lake, whatever, with this fountain. And um, I'm here because I'm investigating the ancient rock wall mystery. Um, my friend Scott Walter has investigated it. Uh, Josh Reeves has investigated it. Now I'm investigating it, and so is author Hugh Newman. So, the museum itself is closed, but there's a reconstructed section of the rock out to the left of the museum, uh, part of the grounds. So, um, reconstructions always sort of scare me a bit because they're sort of interpretations. Uh, we don't know what they were using, you know, what basis, was it photos, the same stones, reconstruction, whatever. Were the stones the actual stones from the mysterious rock wall that's supposed to be so deep and long here in Rockwall, Texas? And by the way, that's why um, this city is called Rockwall, because of this mysterious rock wall. So the previous investigators, and it's not just Mr. Rees or Scott that have done a bit of the coming down here digging into this. It's been several other people. Some leave it open as an unsolved mystery, which it still is, obviously. But you, which is the correct way of viewing it, because you, you just, there's so many factors coming into play. So much uh, forensic investigation is going to be done, and a lot of people don't have access to all of it definitively prove either way if it's artificial or you know natural or both you know natural formation that man then added to we just don't know but either way it's quite an intriguing mystery and that lovely rainbow effect off of that fountain is just beautiful and it is so hot here in like the heat is too and that but that's fine so I'm just gonna sort of walk over here and I know that a bit of filming by Hugh is being done and I think there was somebody else that also sort of walked up uh, thinking that we were the museum directors or whatever employees which we were not but over here is the actual reconstructed rock wall. And this house in front of us is called the Bailey House. Just in case you're interested. Just pan around here really quickly. So that is the reconstructed wall.
Okay, so I'm at the front door of the Manson Monroe Hartman House, which is also the museum. And you see on this little plaque here, it even has a little rock wall. And like I said before, the city itself is named after this mysterious rock wall. So of course it does have importance in history for the town itself. Okay. Now the museum is closed today, although it is supposed to be open. But I'm gonna guess that is because they're, they probably don't have too much funding and all of these things. Okay. So, also, this house or museum is the oldest supposedly built in Rockwall. Let me just back out and give you a view of that. Here in the front, that little piece of stone right there to the left of that blue ADT sign is supposed to be a piece of the wall as well. <clears throat> so the rock wall was discovered in the 1800s and it caused quite a stir apparently because it led to many questions being asked about civilizations of man because there really wasn't anything attributing it to be um, Native American. It, w it wasn't something that generally they worked with this type of stone and building walls. And it would be the Keto Indians, which are from Canadians, I understand them, and their culture kind of a bit more than maybe some people because an area I grew up in is full of uh, Keto history. So I was very lucky that I was able to learn, you know, a bit about them there because there were so many artifacts displayed around them. But, so I'm going to back up a bit and show you. So yeah, this caused quite the stir. Just imagine what looks like a wall built by ancient man, just out of the blue and so deep and so wide. I mean, I can imagine finding that and just being awestruck. Keep in mind though, folks, we don't know the truth. A lot of what nature can do can look a lot like it's artificially created. Um, in Japan, there's a lot of stones that are known to be natural that look as though they had to have been crafted in some way by man. But that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean that's what's going on here. It's, uh, another example is in the Ural mountain range in um, the, uh, Russia, the, uh, there are some huge megalithic stones that may be natural. Maybe they're not slim chance. I've not visited the site myself, though I will be going there. It is a hard track if you just decide to go there. It's, you know, it's a hard, hard place to get to, but it will be worth it. So just imagine digging, and I believe the gentlemen, the farmers that discovered it, three men I believe, um, were digging a well and they hit this uh, hard structure and they began, you know, they were curious and they kept digging and figured out this is what they assumed to be a man-made wall and just went on forever and just they, they couldn't find the bottom of it basically and it looked as though it was in a structured order so like we would build today kind of like if we look down right now and we see these bricks right we know this was man-made it looks man-made we see it neatly stacked on top next to each other in front so this is the thought process of the gentleman that found uh, this rock wall. So, personally, I fully, fully
truly believe without a doubt that there are ancient civilizations that are just unknown to us because of so many cataclysms that occurred in the past, wiping people out, bottlenecking populations to where there's almost nothing left, and even times where there probably is nothing left of the previous uh, culture, people, hominids, whatever you want to say. So I take this kind of uh, hunting very seriously. I'm sorry about the wind, guys. I apologize. Today is a very windy Texas day. So, I think that a lot of our history by cataclysms and whatnot else has been lost and buried by time and erosion and landslides and floods and just all kinds of things. So it does not hurt to come out and investigate places like this. And it, just imagine, if you will, what type of civilization, if this is a man-made site, could have done this. Who were they? Human, or human hybrids or Denisovans or just who knows? Just who knows? But I do know this. The stories that go along with this rock wall are related to giants as well. So there are supposedly giant skulls have been found along the wall and near it and ancient hieroglyphs that can't be read. I did a bit of research on that, but I can't locate anything. I found a few old photos, but for me, and symbols is something I study heavily. It's one of my areas. Um, that I concentrate on, I can't really make heads or tail of it being anything close to what I've seen as, you know, a form of writing, but that doesn't mean anything because, again, thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago when this civilization may have been here, they may have uh, communicated in a different way, including their writing with their symbols or their carvings, whatever you want to call it. So it's difficult for us modern day people to try and understand that because we are in our thought processes of modern man and how we look at things. We are taught to look at things in a certain way, a certain aspect. And that becomes problematic and hard then to sort of understand truly even a small percentage of what ancient man was trying to get across with their writings. Now, with that said, I've just started my investigation here in Rockwall. I arrived to Dallas last night, drove straight over here to Rockwall, and I'm already intrigued with this site. I barely found it, the, the small museum, but happily it's still here, though it was supposed to be open. It's not. That's okay. I understand. Because what I really am interested in was what was outside and to the left of it, which is the reconstruction. Um, but I am curious to find out if the stones used in this reconstruction are actual stones that were pulled from the rock wall. Um, every avenue I've went to to try to figure out where can I see in the ground part of this rock wall, and it's always people saying things to me um, such as, well, you know, it's been unearthed and buried and, you know, complications, politics, just, just endless, um, you know, excuses. And I'm not saying they're unfounded excuses or anything. I'm just saying it's very uh, difficult to try and delve into a mystery when you have to work super hard at it. But that's okay. I like hard work. And... So, I'll continue my investigation. I would like to get inside this museum, though, because I hear tell there's some artifacts related to the rock wall inside. Um, so, hopefully, I can... There's a phone number on a sign down here, and I'm going to try to call that. I tried to call earlier uh, for my hotel, but no luck. Nobody answered. But I won't give up. I'm going to continue on trying to investigate this and see just how old and how real this um, wall is and 
just why why the mystery why haven't you know we've been out here I know that archaeologists work on grants most of the time and so if you're gonna investigate it you're probably gonna spend a lot of your own time and money and I know how that goes because I travel around the world hotel rooms transportation costs food airfare it all adds up to a lot so let me just walk back over here and hopefully um, the, I can get a bit of time with the rock wall again because I had to move out of the way for somebody else to view it. So this says that they are using stones from the walk wall discovery on Sherry Stodge Hill Fowler Park's uh, grandfather's farm. So that's interesting. Also guys, if you come here, they do have a donation box, which I did put money in. So I hope if you come, you can put a little something. If not, oh, that's fine, it's understandable, but if so, please do. So thank you guys so much. I hope you visit it and have a wonderful, knowledgeable day.